Hello! Okay, is this working? I have to wait for my normal audio video announcement. But I think, I think we're good to go. So this week is pretty unplanned. So, um... <laughs> Greetings, New Zealand. How you doing? Audio and video okay? Nice. Let's see who's hanging around the chat today. So, hello, Van Laser, Unique Persona, Tycheline. Oh, that's a bot. But greetings anyway, bot people. Uh, Barrett, Ponder Pimp, Entropyad, Elevator Simulator, Default XR, and Davex Unit. Hello, hello. Um, let's, yeah, let's do some of this. So, yeah, I was out drinking last night and not thinking. So, um, I think what we'll do today is some flow noise. Because I was, uh, so basically I want to do curl noise at some point, but this seems like a sensible place to start, seeing as I haven't done anything like this yet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a vector field. So what we're going to, let's get a doodle thing up. Right. So the idea is, if this were working, or if I was maybe, oh, that should have switched the keyboard over as well, but apparently just the mouse. Oh, well, this is going to be good if we can't type. Exciting times. Right. Yes. Things are working. Keyboards are working. Don't fail me now. Right. So we have... We're going to have some grid. And each point, we're going to generate a random direction. 2D direction. Doesn't matter which one. And we're going to use Perlin noise so it's stable and everything kind of flows together. It's not completely like white noise around them. And then we're going to, this is going to be a vector field. And then we're going to put particles down. Might just do spheres, something like that lazily. And then we're going to push them around. We're going to use these as uh, forces. So we're just going to add to the particles acceleration. And we're going to push them around using this. That's the general idea. And that will give us a basic kind of flow noise type thing. And then we might see if we can uh, make something pretty. But we won't push ourselves too hard on that one. Let's just see what's going on over here. Hello, hello, hello. Drink is greater than think. Indeed. The last night was. Um, hey, Pixel Atlo. Cool. We're uh, starting again from uh, Master. I've branched off and I have pushed, I think. So, for those playing the home game, you can follow along. Um, so, the first thing I want to do... We're not actually going to be doing much of the 3D rendering today, so I'm going to make a separate file where we can just start making a pipeline. Um, we're going to have a pass through uh, vertex shader. So we're going to take a vec2, we'll just call it vert, and we'll do our normal kind of uh, pass through construction. So we make a vector4 out of this so that the vertex shader is happy and we need some UVs for the fragment shader so we're just going to Shift some stuff. Back to 0.5, and then we're going to multiply the original one by 0.5. So this is going to be the vertex positions, which is going to be from minus one to one. We want UVs, which are going to range zero to one. So this little bit just here uh, does that. We don't need the doodle turned on now. So let's just compile that. And it doesn't compile. What have I done? Right, um... Oh yeah! Never been doing this too long for not making stupid mistakes. Right, slime, enable some concurrent hints, and... Caffeinated bilge. Nice. <laughs> Right, got our basic fragment shader, and this is where we are going to generate our uh, vector field. It's going to be really simple, um, so let's pass in our UV first. Do we even need that? Yeah, yeah, we are going to need that, because we are going to um, get some noise, a noise value. We're going to use Perlin noise, because it's handy, and we've already got it. Uh, we're going to multiply the UV by some number, um, because let's actually just... It'd be nice if we could actually see a bit more what's going on. So let me just get the pipeline up and running and we can render some stuff. Def pipeline, um, noise pass. 
Oh yeah, this empty parens here, these are, this is the uh, context. This is so you can pass in additional information to Def Pipeline about certain things about the pipeline. For example, um, declaring ahead of time what the um, primitive type will be, which can be useful in some cases. So let's look at this. So we're going to have to take the vert stage, which takes vec2, and the frag stage, which takes vec2, and turn them into a pipeline. That's done. And then um, blit noise is just going to call our new pipeline. So noise pass. We need uh, some vertices, vertex data to pass up. And there is a helper function in Nineveh called something like get quad or get quad stream vertex 2. There we go. Vertex 2. That should do some stuff. So is there anything else to do? Not for now, let's just do that. Um, that's a variable, so we need to make that a function. And then we'll go look at our main loop, play with votes, which is actually in a file, not a directory. Who knew? Um, also, let me know if the uh, font or anything is a little different this time. The capture device I use normally has a few problems with actually doing 10, like um, 1080p. And I use a slightly smaller resolution. I use 1680 by 1050 or something like this. And it's normally happy. And this week it's just fine with the full 1080. So I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, cool. Thanks. It's okay. Glad it's readable. That's the only main thing. So we're doing all this drawing stuff here. I'm not going to get rid of it yet because it's just work. So let's call bullet noise. And we get a load of noise. Um, that looks like garbage though. That's really interesting. Um, is it really that? Oh! Yep, but was it... This looks worse than normal. Yes. <laughs> well, this is a good start. Let's get rid of that. Oh, let's find out what's going on. Right, so we're passing in our quad. That's, it's just, it's so, it's so simple and boring. What could be happening here? Back to, um, not requires, provides. Does it provide that? Requires two random numbers per point. Oh yeah, sorry, that's the explanation of why it's using um, the hashing function it uses. Runs about the same speed. Only the hash function needs integers and it's gonna handle that inside itself. But we were doing noise stuff the other day. It's gonna be one of those streams. It's gonna be one of those streams. Okay. Um, well, let's, I have been screwing around with some things a while ago, but I wouldn't expect this kind of corruption. Good. I'm glad that made no difference. Otherwise I'd be very disturbed. Um, okay, let's, I'm going to do the lazy thing for a start is just see if I've made a really stupid mistake. Um, and then we can grep for Perlin, which is in flow, and, oh no, yeah, that's the file we've got. Oh boy. Right, let's stash this. Let's go to episode 16. Let's grep for Perlin, which we had in our render letters. And, yeah. Nothing super exciting here. We just, yeah, we pause it and very strange. I guess we can just spit out the, uh, we're gonna have a look at the shader in a second. I did not expect that. Oh, well, this is what happens when you do it live. 
Let's just see what the chat's saying first. Hey, Yuri, how you doing? That's it. You, it's the first time you've turned up in this stream. It's your fault, boy. You did this. Right. Um, okay. Let's just see that the basics is working. Give me some red. Okay. So, yeah. There's something up with our function. Let us get back to episode 17. Let's... <laughs> what I could, could I have been doing wrong? Wait a second. Have I actually just done this wrong instead? So it's from zero, it's, it's minus one to one. So we divide it in half, which means it'd be minus 0.5 to 0.5. Then we add 0.5, which will now put it in the region of zero to one. Yeah, that's fine. What are you? Well, if the pearly noise is gonna be shitty, that's gonna really change what I can actually do this stream. <laughs> you, sir, are a problem. All right, well, let's use some of the features we actually have and pull the noise pass shader down and see what we got. So when it compiled, we have a call to Perlin noise. Yeah, that's it. There's really not much going on here. Did I screw up something in Vertex shader? Nope. Hmm. I'm gonna just do something. Oh, I hate this. Let's just, let's just restart and pretend nothing happened. If this fixes it, I'm going to be very upset, actually. I'm hoping that corruption is still there, because... This is the devil's work. Hmm. <laughs> Tell you what, if this is a... Uh... I'm saying I put a post it on the top right screen of Buff Bags. Um, yeah, I've boshed it. Indeed. Great picture. I'm still finding stuff in that I love. Okay, let's bring this over here again. That's fine. Um, let's compile our stages. Also fine. I'm going to bring this over to the. Play with Vert's file. There's just so little going on here. <laughs> For there to be a problem in this. Well, you know, it's consistent. I'll give it that. We didn't see this last week. What have I been working on in the last week? What could I have screwed up? Hmm. Oh, wait a second. I was doing some experiments in the compiler. Let's just see if I'm on a weird branch. I am on a weird branch. Um, propagate function arg environment. That shouldn't have been a problem. Okay. Well, we take, we've gone away from our regular schedule programming into whatever this is. This is what happens when you don't prepare the day before. I will learn these lessons the hard way. All of them. Right, and in Keppel. Yes, I'm also on a branch here. Um, there's nothing of use there. I started looking into um, debugging shaders, which could be quite handy here right now. Um, because what I want to be able to do is to... You remember when we were doing the erosion stuff the other week? And we were trying to see what the values were by writing them back out to textures and doing the multiple render target stuff. But it just got confusing because then we were fixing both. We were adding code for the debugging and trying to fix the code we were working on. It was just a pain in the ass. Um, I started looking into how to basically do print statements or an equivalent of that in uh, shaders. Now, it would be nice to be able to use um, SSBOs, but instead, I've um, that only works on... GL 4.3 and up. And the problem with that is obviously on OS X, it only supports 4.1 because those people are fucking assholes. Um, so we can't do that. We're gonna have to work with something that works from three. And the way to do that then is transform feedback buffers for all the vertex stages, uh, go kind of vertex uh, geometry and tessellation shaders. And then we can do multiple render targets for the fragment shader and 
I want all of that to be automatic. I just want you to write peak around expressions in your shader and then compile and that stuff just come out. Um, we'll, that will be cool when it works, but it's a kind of ongoing project. But huh. Interesting stuff though. Interesting, another word for really fucking annoying. And one function's gonna be missing because we haven't loaded flow yet. We'll get there. Actually, I should just comment this out now. <laughs> just before that compiles it. Right, in package play reverts, start this thing off again. There's nothing there, correct. Um, go into our flow file, not in Kettle. We're somewhere else now. Compile this. And, well, it's stable. Gotta give it that. <laughs> Something reporting weird here. Nah, this shouldn't make any difference at all. No, that's all correct. It's got to be our perling noise function, but I was pretty confident that was uh, that was solid at this point. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Right. Okay. So if you don't write out, I see. I was under the assumption that in GLSL, if you only wrote out um, a float or a vec two or a vec three, that the other values were standardized. But <laughs> Johnny really looks like I need to leave or something. No. Stay. We've just I understand what's going on now, and um, but it turns out it can leave them just as garbage. So if we multiply this by ten now, we will see the Perlin noise stuff we expected. I mean, there's bigger gaps than we'd expect because, of course, this goes from minus one to one. So um, you know, some of, some of this is shifted into areas which are we can't draw. But that was that. Okay, so we have to provide a vector four on the way out. I wonder if I should um, change the compiler so if you emit something with less components than a vector for it would fill in the rest. It sounds like something that like I would prefer to prefer to standardize. Hmm. Anyway, let's forget that and get back to the task at hand. We're gonna make flow noise. So, Jesus, enough of this. Right. So we have some noise. And we have broken code. Again, already. I'm special. Very special today. This should all be live, so we can change everything. Good. And then for each of these pixels, we're going to take the noise and we're going to create a 2D vector. And this is going to make our vector field. So the way we're going to do that is quite simple. Um, what I'd really like to do is just use our... Um, Vector math library we use on the CPU, but I haven't ported all of that over to GPU functions yet. Um, but our vec can be quite simple. We can just use this and sign of noise and cause of noise. And that's going to give us some 2D vector, basically rotating a unit vector by the amount that's coming out of noise. Um, we probably, because this is between this is between minus one and one, so the range is two. And 360 degrees is two pi, correct? It's two pi. So then we multiply this by pi. And that's not the symbol. And yes, other than that, yes, so that just got, that just got louder. Um, Anything else we need to do? No. Actually, let's do this multiply down here. So we do angle is noise times pi. Get rid of you. I know. Then we'll create the vec from the angle and we're gonna return the angle. So now we should get two colors coming through there. Cool, so that's that's where we start. We want to actually store this. Also, um, I think we should decide on a size for this vector field. Um, should we do that? We could just leave it as whatever this size is. 
Yeah, that's fine. Let's leave it at that size. So we are going to need to capture this because we're going to use this in future passes. Um, so let's use an FBR. So def parameter FBO. Um, actually, we should give it a better name <laughs> than FBO. Um, it's going to be vector field. And we make the FBO. And it's going to have one uh, color attachment and a depth attachment. Probably don't need the depth one, but it's not going to hurt either. So let's do this. Not from that thread. Keep forgetting that. Set f vector field. Make the FBO. Jobs are good. So now, when we render this stuff, instead of rendering it to the screen, we want to render it to the FBO. So we can say with FBO bound. Come on, fingers. This is a collaboration between mind and body. <laughs> the two don't normally agree with each other, at least not in my case. Right, so we do this, and I would have expected not to see stuff now. Oh, I know why. Because in our play with verts, let's do this over here. In our play with verts function, we're calling the pipeline directly here. So let's call blip noise instead. Like we're going to do this in two parts because I want to make sure that this was working first. We call blip noise, nothing should change. Um, we wrap it in the FBO stuff and everything goes away. Good. We are now writing into that FBO. Um, we should have a pipeline just for blitting stuff to the screen, just like render a texture to the screen. Um, actually, there are some helper functions in. Um, in uh, Nineveh for doing this. So I'm going to have the vector field sampler. We're going to make this because we're going to need to read from that uh, texture that we just written into. So let's go get our vector field again, which is an FBO. Um, we get the attachment from the vector field. Attachment zero, um, which is this GPU array of this type. So this is RGBA and it's 8-bit. This is our color attachment. And we want the texture from that instead. So we grab that texture. We sample it. And we've got a 2D sampler for that thing. And so now we can set up the vector field sampler with that. And again, should be fine. And now over in, our, in this file, in our main loop, we can just say draw text and that. And this is our texture. There's a little bit of a board around here. It does that by default. Um, it's normally I'm rendering this, say, down in the bottom left or in the top right or something like this. I like having a little bit of border just to remind me that this isn't the final output of another pass. This is just this helper function being called. Young Lena, sup, nerds? How you doing? Good to see you. Um, <laughs> what's going on here? Right. <laughs> CSC Mark, hello. Um, right, so that looks okay. Now we are going to need particles. So, um, when we're going to do the particles on the GPU, it would actually be quite easy to. Um, it might even it would probably make even more sense to do the particles on the CPU side, but the vector field we want is on the GPU already. I'm lazy and I like writing this kind of GPU code stuff. So we're going to make a really simple uh, particle system that just runs everything on the GPU. So how are we going to do that? With ways and stuff and caffeine. More caffeine is needed. It's weird. That's probably the bad choice since I'm feeling a bit jittery right now. But I don't know. Maybe it's soothing caffeine. Maybe this is all I need. Maybe it's withdrawal symptoms from not having drunk coffee in like, I don't know, half an hour. Coding problems. Okay, so how are our particles going to work? We're going to have a buffer. Let's get a little doodle thing up here. We're going to have a texture. And in each position in the texture, we're going to store some information about the particle. The particle is going to have a position and it's going to have a velocity. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just do position and velocity and we'll add 
whatever the value is, I'm pointing with the wrong thing. Whatever the value is in here, <laughs> we're going to use, we're going to add that to the velocity each step uh, multiplied by delta time. And that's going to give us our new particle position. Yeah, that should be enough actually. And if we only need to store position and velocity, then, and it's 2D, we can pack that into one vector four. So we'll do um, position x and y, and then um, velocity x and y in one vector. That'll be fine. And I don't know how many we're gonna need. Let's just do a, we'll do a 64 by 64. That's actually a lot of particles. It's probably too many. Um, yeah, let's just do 32 by 32. Def parameter, and we're going to do a vector field. So how are we going to do this? Let's have a think. We're going to do one pass, which takes the current positions and velocities and updates them, which actually means two textures because you can't read from and write to the same texture at the same time. So we're going to need essentially a flip-flop kind of buffer. So let's def class particles or whatever. I don't know what this is going to be. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we should actually be making a class to help us with this kind of stuff. I said that last week, didn't I? I said like maybe we would do that this week. Mm, yeah, that requires some planning though. I definitely didn't do that. Hey, pixel art law. Um, what's going on? It seems possible that the vector fields could form circle paths, correct? So they may never leave the canvas. Um, yes, that is absolutely true. Um, and you see that sometimes in kind of curl noise implementations. One of the things we can do is we can animate this. So for example, if we were to, let's go up here. If in, instead of uh, 2D Perlin noise, um, we passed in a float. So let's do that. Let's make a vector three out of this vector two and now. Um, and then down here, we would pass in now as in get we'll just get the internal real time Whoa. real time and that's freaking out because it's not a single float true and then hopefully we would see that shift but we're not seeing a shift why why are you denying me Oh, I know why, actually. Because when we bind the FBO, we don't clear it. There we go. Now that value is way too high. But if we, you know, divide it by some larger number, then we can do this. And now, even if there was a cycle in that uh, vector field, it's going to be changing all the time, so it's going to get buffeted out and flow away somewhere else. No dual ported textures. I know, I know, I need something like this. Um, <laughs> strawberry fields, love it, love it. Right. Um, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna have two, it, well, we'll just make two, um, two FBOs. Do you do two FBOs? Yeah, let's just do two FBOs. And then, uh, so uh, yeah, front and back, why not? And in it form is make FBO. What next? Oh yeah, we want to be able to access them in a sensible way. So the accessor is just going to be front. I think that's, we're not colliding with any names. We'll find out soon enough if it complains. Uh, yep, that's fine. Defar and Yeah. Yeah, it's just two particles. I was thinking about being clever there and I really sh shouldn't try to do that. That is not my specialty. Um, particles, this seems like a small font size. Yeah, I must have shrunk it down, Never mind. So we're gonna set F that to be an instance of our particles uh, class. So now if we inspect that, we should see two FBOs of the right size and all that kind of jazz. They're ready to go, basically. That'll be fine. And we can reuse this uh, vertex shader, so we don't need to write that again. 
Um, but we are going to need another fragment shader and stuff. Um, heart frag. It's going to have a UV. What other information are we going to need? Um, I'm not entirely sure yet. Well, we will need delta time. That is one thing we are going to need. So DT is going to be delta time. And then we are going to, oh yeah, another thing we're going to need is that. We're going to need that map because we're going to be updating the particle, um, giving it a new speed and stuff. So vec field um, is going to be a sampler 2D. And what else? Yeah, let's start there. So the position is going to be, uh, this is Swizzle, by the way, the uh, S tilde. Um, so we'll take, oh, not only that, we can actually need the particle data. Oh, stupid. Particles is sampler 2D. So let's get the particle data first. Should we call it P? No, let's call it particle. It's gonna be easier to read. Particle is texture, Particles, UV, um, then the position is going to be the X and the Y components, um, and the velocity is going to be the, the VEC? No, the VEL, um, dust belt or whatever, the Z and W components, that makes sense. And then we're also going to need the uh, VEC field. So our strawberry fields, um, what is this going to be, force, something like that, or push or something, who knows, or we'll swizzle, um, we're actually going to have to get that data first, aren't we? So, um, come on, um, why am I, most difficult things picking names, right? Foo! Because you can't pick a name, you've just got to carry on. I've got to stop worrying about this stuff and get in this habit of just do. Do some stuff. UV. Okay, so now we take Foo and we're going to swizzle out the first <laughs> the first two components. God, that's a terrible name. And that's false. And then we're going to add um, that onto our current velocity. So our new we're going to get a new position. Whoops. New pos is position plus uh, the current velocity. And we'll be returning that here. And then the new velocity is um, vel plus force. And we've got to be careful here. It's going to be this is going to be multiplied by delta time and the same goes here. We don't want to apply those forces too hard. We'll probably throw in some fudge factors later when we're actually playing with this and want it to want it to look <laughs> look good. Busy's time, Barrett. It's like five in the morning where you are. That is that is something worrying. <laughs> Naming and caching, damn straight. Yeah, naming things live as well is really stupid because it's like a good name will be like this long and my screen is way too small for you lovely people. What do you do this to me? Newvel. Um, okay, so that's going to be the result. And this is going to be the particle update pass. Whoops. Part frag. Yeah, I know you can't find that function because I haven't compiled it yet. Cannot swizzle this type. What? Oh, I've got <laughs> here's some bugs. Can someone do me a favor and... Uh... Oh, I might have to do this later. So apparently this is not the valid name for an error. Phrase test translate error. Assume fragment stage. And let's find out where this actually threw. Um, extract strizzle, swizzle string is here and apparently this exception doesn't exist um well that's interesting uh, 
Oh, why do you make your whole stack yourself? You're the only person you can blame. It does exist! Look, it's right there! It's beautiful. Was asked to swizzle a value of type Blair. Okay, so this is something I will fix later, maybe. What package is this? Vario internals. Are we really having that much of a problem now? Vario.internals. If I just do this for now. Oh, what's this? Fourth argument never returns a value. Really? That's interesting as well. Okay, let's just see what happens now if I <laughs> retest this. Okay. Was asked to swizzle a value with type sampler 2D. That is... That would be a problem. Swizzle. Particles. Oh, of course. It should have been particle. Um, so that's good. I will... There's no need to raise, raise an issue for that now because when I go back to Vario, I'm going to see that change and then um, I'll... Yeah, I'll apply that then. So... I can just abort this and recompile that. And now we have no compiler warnings, which is lovely. So, what's the next step? Now this should compile. Good. And then we are going to have an update particles function where we are going to get, we're going to need to. Particles is this. We get the global variable because we love global variables. They're good for everyone and the soul. Um, we're going to need the source. So we're going to render from... We're going to take the... Why did I call this front and back? That's really annoying. I don't want to call them front and back anymore. I want to call them source and destination. No, DST. The symmetry is beautiful. Um, and let's just make sure, go away, we don't need that error anymore, that's old errors. I have enough problem with the current errors I'm making. Um, let's look at particles and make sure that, yes, source and dest exist and everything is fine. Yay! Um, we're going to go down here, we're going to say, with slots, source and destination. From, actually, we can just take that from particles there. And then, what are we going to do? We will render into the destination. And we're going to be calling the particle update pass. We're the quad, that's fine. Um, and what are the uniforms we need? We need a dt, which is a delta time. So let's pass that into this function and get that from somewhere else. Delta time. I will come back to the chat in a minute because I know I've been ignoring you guys for a long time. Uh, particles, which is the source. Wait a second, this is... Um, this isn't quite right yet. Because... We've got a source and a destination, but these are both FBOs and we want samplers for both of them as well. So let's source sampler and desk sampler. And it would be rather nice actually if we could just make all this in one go. So we'll just do make, par make particles data, something like that. Make instance of particles. We're going to have source FBO, um, which is going to be this stuff, the stuff we had before. Dest FBO. And then we're going to need um, samplers for both of those as well. So we'll just do S sampler, um, which is, oh, come on. It's only a couple of characters. There is really no point doing that. Sample attachment text of source FBO zero. Let's put a star there because without that, this uh, variable cannot refer to this one in the definition. Destination sampler is very simple. Dest FBO zero. That should be fine. 
We might have to mess around with the sam some of the uh, sampling parameters later, but we can do that on the fly, so who cares? Okay, and because now we're not creating these in the initial form, we're going to have to have initial arguments. Just source and dest. And the same for these guys. Init arg is going to be source sampler. Whoops. Come on, Chris. Dest sampler. Where are we now? Oh, we've been going for 40 minutes. We have not got very far yet. It's fine. Don't worry about it, Chris. Do not stress. Okay. Source sampler is defined but never used. It's true. So we go source is the source FBO. Um, dest is the dest FBO. Source sampler is source sampler. And dest sampler is that sampler. Cool. We should define a free function for this as well, but we're not gonna, because we can waste a little, just for now. It'll be fine. We're not gonna tell anyone. Just put a happy little cloud down here. Okay, so inspect that object again. Let's just make sure we've got everything. Yes, we've got samplers. We've got things. Let's just make sure that I haven't sampled the same texture no good that is different nice so down here when we run this we're going to grab more things now we're going to need the source sampler and the desk sampler we are then going to pass in the source sampler to our pipeline uh to our yeah particle update pass we are going to pass Something else is the vec field. What is the vec field? It's whatever we're entering here, which was the vector field sampler. Well, yeah, just local and global variables everywhere. Who knows? Consistency, people. With FBO bound, it doesn't know what dest is. So that makes sense. Okay, so now we're taking the source data. We're updating the particles. We're writing it into dest. And then at the end of all this, what I want to do is rotate um, so basically swap um, what source and destination are. So uh, we're going to change source and dest and we're going to rotate source sampler and destination sampler. That means next time we run this it's going to be going the other way. So that's our flip-flop buffer. And again we really should have this uh, pattern wrapped up in some kind of object. Um, <laughs> what's going on here? Oh, we got some fourth people in. Oh boy, yes. I was just listening to a talk by um, Chuck Moore earlier today. Man, some of the stuff is so inspiring. I've been on a bit of a small talk and fourth kind of binge. Um, Darmin, thanks for the follow. Yeah, um, Unicode's not in the standard, but it's... Uh, Yeah, like say, I, I've got to actually check. I wonder which uh, implementations don't support Unicode at this point. That would be very strange. Uh, but yeah, totally. Like I, I'm using Greek letters in some of my code. It's because uh, <laughs> that makes it really popular. Um, <laughs> temp one, temp two, temp three. Yeah, I do that for sometimes in the REPL. But uh, okay, let's have a look. Um, Emojis in code is too far. That is not acceptable. <laughs> Just be gross, isn't it? Just, oh, man. Set Q, the zero set F. <laughs> Boy, what is going on? Right. Yeah, Chuck's amazing. I just, I, I, I love hearing his outlook. I just, it's, it's really nice and refreshing to occasionally just go back to those people who were saying... You know, it can be small, it can be simple, it can be like, maybe you're just not thinking about the problem correctly. Maybe you should be thinking about the machine. Like, that's really nice. I know I'm on the antithesis of that when I'm using CL, which is like, I'm a fair distance from the machine, but still, you know, there's some areas. I think with uh, SPCL we can reach through as well, which would be nice. Anyway, Jesus Christ, come on. Right, so is there anything else we've forgotten here? Um, 
Well, we haven't instantiated any of the data in our particles thing at the moment. So, us, so we're um, currently just be updating garbage. I'll have to think about that in a minute, but I don't want to think about it now. Let's just see if we can get this to run. So update particles, we need a delta time, uh, which is delta, that's handy, that's there. Um, cool. So if I call this, yeah, that kind of makes sense. That's interesting, actually. Hold on, that's, that was a little odd. So, update particles is writing into an FBO. The clear is inside the FBO. So it shouldn't have cleared the, the default frame buffer. Oh, that would be, that would be funky. What else could it have done? Hmm, that was a little unsettling. Huh. That's a little odd. That's a little odd. Right, let's just keep this with, uh, with this guy. Not 100% about that. I'm going to have to go and read some things in the spec to make sure. Yeah, I, that seems that seems like bugs to me. I just got a horrible feeling like maybe it's clearing the depth buffer on something else. Ugh. It was all going so well. No, it wasn't. It wasn't going well. What are you talking about? Right, so anyway. We will be... Uh... <laughs> Something's happening. March on... Ignore, this is a live stream. We don't have to worry about this stuff yet. Does it work in two hours? That's the only question we need to be asking ourselves. Um, it's very hard to tell if these are swapping over. Um, hmm. They should be. <laughs> It would be nice to actually know, though. What would be the best way to do that? Anyway, okay. Stop worrying about little details just now, Chris. And let's actually think about the problem. Where are we? We've got something that should update particles if we had particle data in there. Um, so now we need to put some particle data in there and actually get something working. This bit seems to be fine. So let's... Uh, Let's make some assumptions. This is one of the places I really love the debugger. Just be able to grab a load of data out of this uh, stage and see what's going on. Um, what we could do actually is if we disable both of these and we didn't write this into an FBO, um, we should see it on the screen, but we didn't, which is disturbing. Oh yeah, because we've got this uh, clear stuff here. I mean, that, that, that could be acceptable because if it's just... I'm surprised actually it wasn't completely random data, but, you know. Um, actually, if it was all RGB, if... No, this actually makes sense. Because let's, let's assume it was all zero to begin with, um, even in that case. Then we have a vector, which is non-zero, coming from our flow field. That was getting added um, as a velocity to the... Uh, to the um, on zw component and then on the next frame that was being added to the xy and then it was just repeating so this number should gravitate pretty fast to one direction i think that's just going to one one on the um yeah i think this is okay or maybe i'm just talking shit we'll see we will see We can't, what well, we can actually do there, rather than fucking around with that each time, I'm being dumb, um, is just, let's add another one of these so we can swap between it easily. We should just be able to do um, the slot value of particles and the, you want to look at the destination sampler. Yeah, so we can see that there. 
Um, not very interesting yet. But what we could do to prove that we are actually getting sensible values out of there is just force it for a second. Yep. So things are getting written into the right places. So it's a start. It's a, ooh, look at that. There we go. That's exactly what I was trying to explain a minute ago, which is there would be some initial state and then it would just gravitate into something. I'm guessing the, um, yeah, we're just getting anything greater than one, it's gonna go that way. So let's have a look what's going on down here. <laughs> Do I open these links? Uh, do not trust. Okay. Um, nice. Oh, okay. So regardless of what happens, we're going to need to be able to um, have some particles to actually draw. Now, how lazy am I feeling? Because um, I could just make a load of spheres and use instancing and then use the instance ID to just pull out the values we need. Could do that. I mean, the other alternative is... The thing is, I don't really want to use points because they look like garbage. Um, but if we use points, it will be very easy to make lines and we are going to need lines. Okay, maybe we'll try points. I just I actually haven't used them yet in GL. I haven't just rendered points because they're implemented by different GPU vendors shittily. Like, well, rather, the spec for how points should behave is really kind of dumb. And especially with, I think it's, let me see if I can get this right. I think that when a um, point goes outside of clip space, um, it doesn't take into account the radius of the point or something like this. And so it gets cold early and looks like garbage. That's according to the spec. And then NVIDIA does it differently because it looks like garbage. Um, so they're non-standard and it looks better, but it's also non-standard. So it uh, doesn't give you anything. I don't know. Oh yeah, by the way, the instancing problem I had the other week, I fixed that. Did I mention that before? But I did fix it. I, it wasn't actually, it wasn't in... Um, the implementation of per instance data either it was um yeah it was ah oh, it was actually quite fiddly it was to do with the vertex stream specification when you were passing data from two um buffers to the same fragment shader and the first one was a struct i got the alignments wrong uh, the alignments the um i computed the gl positions incorrectly um, yeah, I could do that. That is true. Now, let's try points. Stop fussing, Chris. Just try points. I've got to teach myself this. <laughs> the boy can be taught. So, um, the first thing to do is we are going to want... How should we do this, actually? Ah, oh, yeah, but the nice thing is if we do if we do spheres, we can switch out the primitive, and that might look quite interesting. Yeah, that might look interesting. Okay, we're going to go with 3D stuff. Going to go with 3D stuff. Laziness wins. Um, let's comment this out for now. And you. Um, and we'll bring back this stuff. And yeah, that's... That's not giving me a happy face with the old... Uh, Nothing on the screen until I move it further down. There is, there is something a bit fucky there. Mmm, not okay. Not okay with that. Lit noise. The clear is inside FBO. The clear is inside there as well. Oh. Let's just. Let's move this up and just see what, um, which one do I have to fix to get this to behave right? <sighs> um, let's have a look. So if we get a blit noise and we do clear and we specify that it's the vector field we're clearing. Oh, so 
<laughs> I think we might end up actually fixing this bug. Okay, let's go look at the implementation of clear. So if there's a target, we're doing this, which we're not. So we're going to be doing this, which is FBO bound uh, in the capital context. Clearing that FBO and then potentially clearing the draw. Oh, hold on there. I can see some kind of logical error there because, right, so with FBO bound, it's only going to bind um, to, like, you can bind FBOs to either the read or draw, or both, I think, but let's just say it was bound to one of them. Now, then that implementation of clear would be incorrect because it goes and finds out, according to the capital context, what is bound to the read position, what is bound to the draw position. So let's say we were bound to this one. And this one was the um, default uh, FBO. Then it's going to clear both of them. Ooh, that sucks. So yeah, this logic is wrong. Good to know. Actually, that could, <laughs> that might have some implications on some of my older projects. Interesting. Interesting. But we need to check this theory first. And the way we do that is to go and do some stuff. Wait a second. Um, with FBO bound, call that there and print. Oh no, wait a second, it's going to be multiple value bind. X and Y. There it is. Can you see it? This is the one we bound, and that's to the draw attachment. This is the default FBO bound to the read attachment. <sighs> yeah, that's a bug. Could someone do me a real big favor and just um, on the Capel repo uh, file um, an issue on there just saying that the implementation of clear without passing an FBO is incorrect. I will uh, I will fix that shortly. But I'm not going to try and do it on the stream because I need to make sure I get that logic right. Because I do want something like what we've got. Okay, so when we do blip noise... Yeah, as long as we pass in the FBO explicitly, then it works just fine. That's nasty. Wonder what the best logic is going to be for that. Thanks, Jace. You're a star. Um, because when you say clear without passing in an FBO, which target do we want? Oh, and push. Yes, good point. But we're an hour in, so maybe it's not the time for me to be worrying about this stuff. But, I mean, the uh, of course I've got to push, but about the implementation of clear. I would like to know though. <laughs> First blood! Oh man, I want to play worms now. Um, okay. Where are we? We need to draw some stuff. So let's not worry about flow for a second and bring up the REPL. Bring up play with verts. Um, and then we're going to have our particles, which are going to be geometry, but yeah. Particles. No, we can't have another class called that. Um, balls. Whatever. What is it we're going to actually be drawing? Yeah, let's do balls. Ball is, has a stream, which is a sphere. And it's got a radius of one. Maybe, maybe that's too big. Who knows? Doesn't matter. Um, and the sampler, we'll just leave it the same as it is right now. We can mess with that later. We just need to get something on the screen. So, uh, 
We've got a ball class, we've got a function that's gonna make it and add it to the list of things. Um, and we've got an update method, which will update the ball, which currently does nothing. Um, this should be enough for us to say make ball and get one right down the center there, which is fine. So good. Um, that will be fine. <sighs> so then we are going to have um, some kind of function for drawing. We'll start it here, but we'll probably move it somewhere else. So defun um, draw particles. And we are going to, what are we going to do? We are going to say with instancing. And we'll have some amount of these. I'm not sure how many particles we'll have. Let's say a thousand for now. Um, and then we're going to... Can we just draw... Um... Hmm. Yeah, maybe we can say... Maybe we can overload this instead. Right, when we draw the ball, we're actually just going to draw a thousand of them dependent on the textures. Maybe this is a dumb idea. We'll see soon enough. Okay, so there's going to be some pipeline. Um, this is going to draw a sphere. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we're going to see. Don't think about too much about it, Chris. Just do it. Um, So this uh, is now drawing a thousand balls, but they're all in the same place. Let's go to the render code, which is this. Um, we're going to be changing the fragment stage to offset it based on texture. Let's just copy all of this rendering stuff into another file, which is um, particles.lisp. Um, why are you doing that? Um, that's a strange color for that to be. Oh, okay, it's just everything. You just want everything to go wrong today. That's that's awesome. This is really strange. I want to blame Emacs, but I know it's just me fucking up. Okay, so depart vert. Frag. And we don't really need, these particles, I, we don't really need them to be shadowed or anything like this. So, shaded. Shadowed. God damn, man. Is he flagging? Yes, he is. And he slept yesterday too. Um, keep our pipeline. So let's compile this, compile this, and compile this. And the upload uniforms, yes, we'll want to pass in. We don't want to make a new version of this function. So let's... Um, Let's be lazy. We're not. We're going to be calling it with instancing. So who cares? Um, we're going to be making one draw call. It really doesn't matter. And so down in things, we'll pass up a whole lot of extra information. Hackity hack, our normal style. So we don't need this anymore. So now, instead of drawing with some pipeline, we're going to draw with depart pipeline. Whoops, not depart that. Okay, so there is our red sphere, and we're all set up to start screwing with this in a usual fashion. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to the position um, the 
um, particle position from our previously calculated buffer. So particles is at um, is a sampler 2D. We're going to get the particle data, which is texture this. Now we need to know which UV to look up in this. So we need to calculate a UV because we don't have that right now because we're in the uh, vertex. We're in the yeah the, the vertex stage. I have got the feeling I'm just saying that completely wrong right now. Maybe there is something in this coffin. So we are going to need to calculate this UV, which depends on two things, the instance ID and the width of the uh, current viewport. Or the, rather the width, yeah, the width of the texture we're reading this from. Um, so particle tech width is going to be a float. And then we've got to think about, yes, I know, this isn't ready. Um, how are we going to calculate our UV? So we take the GL instance ID. And we are going to take, if we divide that um, by, yes, yeah, so if we divide that by the width, and then the remainder is going to be the x-coordinate and the, um, yeah, the result of the division is going to be the y-coordinate. That should work. So this divided by uh, p-tex width and flawed. Now this is one of the cases where in the common lisp spec, floor can take a divisor. I'm not sure if that's the case in um, GLSL. Anyone remember off the top of their heads? Shoot. The fuck? What is going on? Oh yeah, that's fucking not what I needed to see. Okay, so GLSL floor. No, doesn't take a divisor. Okay, just straight up floor. Hold up, what the fuck? Everything goes away? Really? Did I actually manage to close Emacs while I was... Oh. Guys! What is going on tonight? What is going on? <sighs> Breathe out. Let's have a think. No, I don't have a second desktop on this, so I haven't managed to screw that up. Okay, fine. This is just going to be one of those streams. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to write off and never think about again. Oh, man. Really weird. That's what I get from just fucking around too fast. Get a normal setup. Whew. Happy days. Okay. Um, on the bright side, this is going to make sure that I have to clean this code up enough that you guys can run it. So maybe there's a method to this after all. Let's have a look. What's going on down here? <laughs> Q Poirot. Absolutely. Also in the 50s at Mansion. It's crappy for... Oh, blame me. Yeah. Um... <laughs> oh, God. It's so nice having you folks here. Just <laughs> even when this shit goes wrong, it's like I can look at this and just feel better. All right. <laughs> Fight, Fight Club Private Side. Totally. That's what I thought. I'm like, fuck. I don't. I don't think I've looked at anything that weird on this computer. So, um, okay. 
slow down. Okay, function pipelines play is undefined. Yes, that's because you are in the wrong package, Chris. And this is gonna crash, yes. Because blip noise is undefined. That makes sense. Um, if we go to... Huh, which are the function, the uh, new files from today? Um, if we bring, actually that's... Let's save that and then do mx, oh sorry, recover this file. Twenty one oh five. That sounds quite a while ago, to be honest. Nah, I'll be fine. Let's just leave it. Okay. So, what was the REPL complaining about? Sorry, what was the error that we actually got? Blit noise is undefined. Defund blit noise. Oh yeah, it's in flow. So let's compile flow and let's add that to the AFD. What a Dave flow. Um, and then the next one is particles. Okay, so we'll go to particles too. I'll compile that. Um, And some things are going to complain that they're nil. Um, nil is not type FBO. That's very true. Um, that's because our in flow we have these vector fields in the vector field sampler. I should have had some init functions for this, but never mind. Vector field. Nope, it hasn't remembered that. Fine. You will not stop me now. We have the gang on on chat. I have my. Consistent stupidity, so it will be fine. Make FBO zero with depth, yes. And set a vector field sampler to be sample of attachment text vector field zero. Done, cool, right. So that's those ones. And then particles is nil. And set a particles to be um, make particles data, sure. Now we take all of this and we go and put it in reset because we do not want to do this again. And odds are, I'm going to do this again. Um, so, unless vector field not like this, not like this, every time. Okay, um, that's. So that's our vector field stuff. And then less particles. The show goes ever on and on down from the door where it began. Let's, uh, let's go with this. <sighs> yeah, right, okay. The worst part um, of a live coding session is, yeah, getting the ripple back in tech abstract. That is a pain. Um, yeah, you almost want that, uh, yeah, you want to save your image all the time. But again, you can only save stuff that exists inside the call, uh, like GC and all this kind of thing. All the resources that we got out in uh, foreign memory would all be fucked, wouldn't they? No, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Hey, I suppose if you can just save the whole... I need to fuck with that, actually. That's interesting. When you save Lisp and Die, wouldn't the foreign memory be maintained as well? Because it's still in your... Like, the... Memory allocated for your program. Yeah, that should be fine. There's nothing special about that. Hmm. Hmm. Don't know. <sighs> okay. Um... Yeah, in fact, that definitely should work. Foreign... The, um... When you're using the FI to allocate, uh, memory... And then you do a save lisp and die. Um, wouldn't that 
That should that should save that into the image as well, right? I, I don't actually know. Like it it really depends on what save listman die is required to do because the FFI is not in the spec. Not in the yeah, not in the standard. So who knows? All right. Anyway, yes. No. <laughs> yes. Okay. We can go with this. Not some pipeline. That's the bit we lost. There we go. Now that's right. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. Phew. Fucking hell. So, where were we? Yes, we were. <laughs> <laughs> we were calculating a UV, which was going to be two things. It was going to be the GL instance ID um, divided by the... So we wanted to pass in two extra things, which is the particle data. Let's just say particles, sample of 2D. Um, and we'll say particle data. Particle data is texture, particles, UV. And UV is going to be the um, PTEX width, which is a float. Um, so we divide it by that, and that is going to give us our Y component. Um, as long as we floor it. And the X component is going to be the remainder. So isn't that just mod? I'll just do all GL instance ID by PTEX width. Is that correct? Who knows anymore? You guys can tell me. Does that seem sensible way of getting the UV? Anyway, so that's that. So then we'll get the particle data. And what we really actually only need is the, um, the particle velocity. No, particle position, um, which is going to be the X component of the particle data. And then the idea is we would add that to not before scale, after scale, we would add that. What part of this are you not understanding? Do we actually need scale for this? No, we don't need scale. Um, oh, it's because we're not putting the friends around. That was it. <laughs> what a week. Okay, right, so that should uh, not work at all. Okay. Of course it's not going to be the X, is it? It's going to be the XY. You fool! Fool of a took. Right. Um... Hello, son. What's going on there? Plus, we're cool with Vec2 and Vec3. That's very true. So, we would do this. Nothing called normal? What's wrong with normal? A function called with normal was found in this environment. Nobody wants a function called normal. What are you doing? Oh, wait a second. What? It's saying that GL instance ID is unidentified. Wait a second. Let's assume that this is a vertex stage. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? We got some weird sh <sighs> oodles of weird shit going on because this shouldn't be running right now. I mean, it should have been paused by the the error, so that's what I expected. And then it's complaining about. GL instance ID. So retest assuming a vertex stage. Yeah, the vertex stage was saying that. I am seeing errors that I have just never seen in this before. This stuff has been stable. What are you doing? That's just what we need. Unbalanced parens. Awesome. That was special stuff right there. <laughs> should, we, should we just cancel this stream? It's all going so well. 
Um, right, so particle position added onto uh, the position of the vertex should mean that we can uh, move this guy around. I'm pointing with my finger again, this guy around. So if I commented this out and said that the position was one, zero, it would barely move. But if we did 10, then it would, it would hopefully move somewhere. I expect I have, yeah. I am so glad this is being committed to the internet forever. It's so nice to know that I can always look back on this confusion and humiliation. Uh, <laughs> what the balls are you? So, okay. There he is. Yes. Finally. <laughs> Work. We are not going to have this stream done tonight. Yeah, it's nearly half nine already. It's just been constant bugs. Okay, so let's let's actually think sensibly about something for a minute. Um, the number of particles we're going to be drawing is dependent on, um, again, the size of the textures. And, um, well, the number of particles we're drawing is based on the number of instances we tell it to draw. Um, and then it's going to read data out of that texture and so we need to initialize that texture with some decent information. It doesn't matter if there's lots of parts of the texture we're not using. They don't interfere with each other, so that should actually be fine. We need to initialize it. Um, yeah, okay. That could be fine. Um, Things. Okay, so we're drawing a thousand to that ball, but at the moment it's got nothing to read from. So we should be passing up the um, particle data. The particles uniform is going to be a sampler. It's going to be the source. Or should we do source or destination sampler? I guess it's the destination sampler of particles um, and we have to go and enable uh, the concurrent hints again so I haven't done that that is the particles object which is cool uh, we can inspect that and we can see that it has the things we're expecting um, that's good we also need to know um, let's call that p data we'll grab that that is a sampler um, the other thing we're going to need to know about it, let's just dump that here, is... Okay, yes, there isn't actually a function called that. Um, let's just say continue and go and add that in things. No, in particles. We have that class. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't things. Yeah. Um, or flow. Who knows where I threw it? Okay, so. Let's have some accesses for this. Source sampler, that will have to be destination sampler. Um, now that function should work, yes. And then when we do this, we want to get the texture. So we go sampler texture that will give us the texture and then we want to get the dimensions of that because we've got to pass it up to um, the pipeline it's dimensions not dimension uh, we want to get the first one of those because it's a list and we need to um, it's going to expect it to be a float so let's do that so that will give us our What do they call it? Uh, Ptex width. Ah, 
and you see that moved slightly. And the reason it moved is it's currently, um, as we saw earlier, maxed out at one. Um, the first argument is real, not single float. Yeah, that's fine. I am not going to deal with optimization stuff right now. Really is not the time considering everything else that's been exploding in my face. So let's go down here. We saw that this was, oh yeah, that's our vector field, which is cool. Actually, we can have both of these. Bottom right. Um, because this is just one, 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 one. Uh, no, it's not. It's, uh, sorry, one, one. That's offset uh, this ball very slightly. Why we saw it move when I recompiled this stuff over here. Um, that should be fine. Uh, we need to initialize this with something sensible and then then i don't know then we might be good to go actually yeah uh, let's yeah let's write that function either way we're going to need it so uh let's do that we've got some stuff to do with particles in flow do we want to move that ah no let's let's leave it for now <laughs> like again, bigger problems. Um, be fun. Um, actually, what th maybe we can just use the pipeline to reset it. That'll be fast at least. Um, Yeah, this update pass. The reset frag. Sure. And we'll just set it to zero, 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 zero. Reset pipeline. Article reset. Pass, sure. <laughs> reset frag compile defun uh, reset particles and the way we're going to do this is we'll just do two passes probably come on dude how are you guys doing anyway? Sorry, I've phased out here in my own. Um, <laughs> I just answered the question to welcome the machine. What was I even saying? What was I saying? I don't know anymore. Um, <laughs> Technically, the standard doesn't mention garbage collection either, though. Does it not? That's interesting. Man, I haven't even thought about that before. Anyway. Oh, man, I just... Implications! Right, um... Okay, with FBO bound... Uh... Destination. <sighs> do for I flow to do. Do this. We'll do the particle reset pass. Do this. Normal shit. Fine. Oops. Unfined variable delta time, that is true, but we don't have to worry about any of that in fact, so the only thing we want to do is bind the FBO and clear it, in fact. So we don't need any of that. <laughs> um Welcome to the machine. Oh, that's gonna be great. That's gonna be my head for ages now, which is lovely. Um, the division bell is beautiful. Right. What else am I forgetting? 
Um, probably stuff. Ah, who cares? Let's just run it and see what happens. There's one of the just big differences. There we go. Yeah, so everything's everything's happening there, and that's fine. But at least that does zero out to begin with, and stuff happens, which is good. What we would hope. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, that's actually interesting. So. Yeah, no, that's just something about that's just confused me. I'll deal with it soon. Right. Things. So what I would have hoped though so you bring the REPL over here. Um, when we were drawing the ball. Let's get rid of these two. And if we go to particles, what I'm going to do quickly is just whatever that particle position that came in was, I want to multiply it by 10. Because um, I want to get a decent amount of movement when I do reset particles. See, this guy starts moving around now, which does make sense. Um, given, oh man, that was actually useful to have that available. Um, top right view. So yeah, that makes sense that that was moving that guy around. What's kind of odd though is that I would have expected to see lots of particles, lots of balls, because we're drawing a thousand of them and the UV is going to be calculated based on that, on the instance ID. So why is that not happening? That's really strange. Because it's like they're all getting the same UV. But, oh, wait a second. UV is 0 to 1, and I'm calculating an index as if I'm thinking of an index into an array. Uh, so this needs to be normalized. So, yeah. Um, how are we doing that then? Let's doodle it down. Let's work this out. My brain's just bailing now. He shall grom it because that has been cancelled as well from our last crash. Or our last me shutting things down because being an idiot. Okay, so we have this. It goes from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. We've got an, an instance ID which is between zero and a thousand. Um, this texture has a width. So it would be uh, the texel would be like if this whole range was to fit here. Now let's just think about, think about it properly. If the width is say, let's just say the texture is just 500 wide. Doing this would get us the zero to 500 number. So then we just divide it by the width and that's gonna get us the correct texel. So one second, turn off the doodling. So we have to divide it by p text width, then zero is zero, one is one over 500. Yeah, and that's gonna go all the way along until it's one, um, 500 over 500, that's correct. This one, we're gonna have to provide the um, height as well. So we may as well change this to p text size, um, change this to x,
y compile, and that's going to throw an error saying that p text width doesn't exist. Um, yes, actually, it's not going to do that yet because it's going to fail here. Now it's going to compile about p text width not being present, which is correct. So, god damn. Um, this one. We actually don't need to turn it into a float. We can just turn it into a vector. We should be able to do this, and that should work. Um, yes, it's still not called ptex width. It's called ptex size. Continue. Okay. Reset particles. There is more. <laughs> Okay, so now we're seeing multiple of them. That's a start. Even though this data is kind of garbage. Um, let's do a couple of things. Let's go to play with verts.lisp and we'll make this a little simpler. Um, let's take the vector field that we have and we're going to make it essentially uh, 2D again. Because everything moving is just a bit too much for me to think about. So... Um, do this as Z, um, put that here, and then comment that out for now and just say zero. Now that's static, which is good. Um, so that's going to be a vector field that's static, and then each iteration we're going to add um, onto the velocity, which means that the velocity is going to, depending on where we are, it's going to keep getting higher. Um, it's a good point, actually. We are probably sampling the... I think we're sampling the velocity wrong. Yes, I think we are. One second. When we update the particles, we are looking... Where's our velocity field? Um, we've got our current velocity. X, so current position, current velocity. And then we go and look up at UV, which is not correct. That's... Um, UV is our position within the texture our particle information is stored not where we should be reading into this based on where our particle is in the world so that should be based on position um, and it shouldn't just be that because it's got to be normalized so this should be divided by the um, the size so the vec field size or whatever it is um, field size let's do that it's exactly the same as what we had before um, not sample 2D. The same thing as we had before, Chris. Come on. Right, so um, now currently they're going to be divided by zero, which will be a problem. Let's go to play with verts. When do we update particles? Here. When we update particles, we should be passing in um, that same thing as before. So, vec. No, what do we call it? Field size. Field size is a vector made of the dimensions of um, the texture that's in the sampler, vector field sampler. Right. Okay. So now let very little is happening. That was what I thought needed to be. Um, now, but, but our positions, what is our actual position? Maybe we get away with, um, hmm. Yeah, actually part of the problem might be that again, our, oh, that's something stupid. I should have thought of a lot earlier. Um, so our FBOs that we've been making here for our particle data, um, I even mentioned this earlier. They are... Um, come on, Chris. Think of the word. They're 8-bit um, vectors. They're normalized. So they're going to have a range of 0 to 1, um, which is not what we want. We want floats. So this should have actually been something else. Um, 
So, come on now. Source should have been make texture. Um, and we'll actually pick some dimensions this time. Uh, the initial contents are going to be nil. The dimensions will just do 64 by 64 because that's enough for what we need. Um, the element type is, sorry, for our particle data is vector 4, which will give us floats. The, what else? Is there anything else? Probably not. Um, we should have had that for the destination as well. Make foo would have been taking a source and a destination. We definitely don't need the depth buffer, so I'm not actually going to worry about them. Um, let's just do make particle data and see what happens. What a pain. Uh, the assertion on this is quite a nasty, that's a, that's a bad error. Um, gen attachment for this FBO. Um, Okay, then let's see how we're meant to do it. We have a texture here, defr temp, when you don't remember your own API. You're making an FBO from um, oh, maybe it was like this. Maybe it was list zero, because I need to tell it which attachment and temp zero. Yeah, that was it, okay. So, list zero. Good, well there's that. So then when we go to update particles, it is going to get, at least this has been written, so it's gonna get the size of that um, from, now is that correct? The vector field sampler, we actually want to sample that. Now we can, ah, oh, that's interesting actually. Maybe we got this wrong, it's the particle data maybe we're reading incorrectly. Oh boy, let's have a think. Okay, so with this FBO bound, the size of the viewport is gonna be the size of the texture, which is 64 by 64. So our UVs here, we would actually need to, um, we're gonna get that right? So our target's gonna be 64 by 64. We're doing a, a straight up quad shader. So we should get one call for each pixel. That'll be fine. Um, hard to say, hard to say. Um, oh. Check what's going on in chat. Given the time, this is not happening today. This is not happening today. This one's been a pretty much of a train wreck of an episode, but I hope you had some entertainment just chatting, <laughs> chatting yourselves and watching this go down. But this has been a, uh, yeah, this has been annoying. Okay. Yeah, no, the UV will be correct for each one of those. We get the position and the velocity out of here. We take the position in and divide it by the field size. Now, is that gonna be actually correct? Let's have a think about that. Really depends. Um, if our positions are just zero to one, then we could just use the position as the UV because the field we can just sample from however and that's that's okay yeah i guess i just haven't haven't thought about actually how, how um yeah how how this um how we should be reading this data properly i just kind of winged it and forgot some stuff on the way okay 
Um, because this is going to be a very small number. So for this to make sense, we would have to Okay, if we just say that the particles are going to um, travel around in a region um, from 0 to 1, we cap that, then, yeah, just trying to think of ways I can actually just fix this up in the time that we have left, and it's pretty <laughs> difficult to come up with some rules that will be not sucky. Um, Because our position is very quickly going to go uh, quite high. Unless we clamp it, um, which we could do. Yeah, we can just wrap it around. That's not really a problem. Um, let's just take pos for now and just see what we get. Are we really uh, having problems there as well? Nice. Oh boy, guys. This is, this is not a fun one. Um, okay, no, like that's uh, that's let's call it. It's this isn't happening this episode, so um, this didn't work, did it? <laughs> so, the, the lesson learned is I should actually plan before I try and do one of these streams. Um, sorry about that. I feel like I wasted a bunch of your time, to be honest. Um, I will have to... We will come back to this one. I'll probably do it next week. Um, but this is... Ah, uh... <laughs> oh, this is a butt. So, what should I have actually done? Let's... I thought I had this in my head before we started, but... Oh, has the other thing dropped out again? Here we go. Okay. So, I needed a map that had information for the particles. And that would be, say, 64 by 64. And then I was going to have a map, this vector field. And this will be, a, like, yeah, it's just a regular texture, so 0 to 1. So we would need a way of mapping like whatever the maximum range of our particles was into this. So we could have clamped our particles to um, zero to one as well. Um, or we could have had them in the whole range of, a, of the quad and that could have been fine, but let's just say that they were clamped from zero to one. So the POS was meant to be from zero to one. And then we could have used the position directly as the UV sampling from here um, and added it like we were planning to do here. Um, and then that would have given us the new position which we would have written into the target um, one of these. And then what would be the next step? We have our new particle positions and then it would be a case of rendering all these spheres and taking the positions from that. Now, that wouldn't have been the size of the field, that would have been the size of the um, of, of this guy. So I suppose it is, we can actually have a look just to see if I, did I screw that up as well? Um, when I was updating the particles, what was the size I was using? No, it was the size of particles. So that should have been um, 64 by 64. Ah, but it's, it's, well, it would have been, yeah, at the moment it's large, but. Wait a second, that was large. But we, I thought we regenerated our um, particle data. That's rather strange. I can't have been helping either. Yeah, that was meant to be 64 by 64. Did I just, uh, well, the order I made particle data and didn't save it to particles. It's still moving very small distances there, though, if, if moving at all. Yep. 
that's just just gonna have to be how it is this week. What a bummer. Um, no, I mean the. Um, I didn't actually have a good reference for this. I was just thinking about it. Like I'd heard of. Um, I had heard of uh, the flow noise thing, which was basically just, yeah, have a bunch of particles and drive them around based on um, vectors generated from a noise. We got Perlin noise. It was easy to generate that field of vectors that we got up up here. <laughs> I'm on the wrong computer again. Here we go, up here. This guy uh, was doddled to generate, naturally. Um, that's interesting. Now this doesn't work again. It's such an interesting day for bugs. It really is. This gear has been so stable for weeks, and now, and now nothing. Very frustrating. Yeah, we are on this one, and I. Yep, and now suddenly it works again. Okay, so yeah, this guy. Like I said, it was a doddle to generate. Um, and then the idea was we were just going to store these particles. And I've done this effect before. This is one of the things that's bugging me. And I thought I could just wing it for this stream. Was all that we're doing is storing position and velocity of a particle in a texture and updating it using flip flop. And that's like, that's so easy. And I can't believe I messed it up. But um, that's how it is. Particles with Brownian uh, collision noise. I'm not sure because I'm, I haven't actually looked at what collision noise is. Um... <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Jay says, "Hey, baggers, if we're wrapping up, uh, could you make the um, could you make any progress understanding disassemble?" Um, Jace, I'm not sure what you mean there. Uh, disassemble of what? Because that's a that's a common Lisp function for getting the machine code or the the machine representation of the uh, compiled function. Barrett says, by the way, I still haven't got um, a working Kepl L2 on FreeBSD. Man, I have not tested with any FreeBSD stuff. That would be very interesting. Um, you mentioned it in your blog a few weeks ago. Possible I did? Let's have a look. Since we've got a couple of minutes, I I'm happy to, t I'm happy to a answer any questions. Um, because my... Uh, my trust in myself is an all-time high right now. <laughs> Let's uh, document sea baggers. Wow, that must have been old. Come on, son. That was <laughs> I had forgotten about that. That was uh oh the, the sausage whacker, one second. This was a post from ages ago about um Google Wax. Jesus. Anyway. Um I still not sure about this disassemble thing though, dude. Maybe I'm just not spelling it right. Oh yeah, this uh, right. Let's uh I did mention that. Da -da -da. Oh, uh, basically yeah, I was getting interested in um Yeah, getting interested in looking into the x86 assembler side of things. I am, but I just don't have any time for that right now. Um, that would be cool. But just so many things. I'm, I've, again, taken a little bit of a dive looking at some of the stuff inside Unity because that's kind of interesting and need to get a feel of, again, what a good standard library for that kind of stuff looks like. That's been kind of educational. Um, I'm doing some Keppel stuff when I can in these streams. Just a little bit busy right now. Um... <laughs> but yeah it would be nice I'm like I'm just after having read that uh, 
yeah, the, the what every programmer should know about memory paper is really nice. Just because it, like it's the kind of education that I haven't had. I I didn't study any of this formally, so it was a really good kind of look into how these machines work. And also, what's interesting is the techniques that they're talking about are applicable to any language, because it's about how your machine works and how to lay out your data and things such that you know cache and branch prediction, all, all the all the nice like well, that's branch prediction. Um, kind of the caching behaviors and all this kind of stuff are just better. And so that's, yeah, it, it, it's a really interesting area. And I would love to, I, I've been chewing over um, some kind of data structure stuff that would be, would hopefully help me to write nice, fast code in common Lisp, but also um, basically I wanted static, kind of like um, basically, Oh, come on, work it out. I, I want to be able to have huge numbers of um, objects, essentially, in my game. Um, but I don't want them to all be garbage collected, or um, like individually, because I don't need that kind of overhead. And for most of the objects in the game, you know when it, they're going to be initialized and destroyed, um, because they have certain, certain life cycles. It's like at the start of end levels and all this kind of stuff. You're initializing and deallocating things in chunks. So I was interested in the idea of things that are garbage collected in a much coarser level. Um, and also looking into some of the like the stuff that came out um, of Naughty Dog regarding how they were doing their scheduling across threads and stuff like this and across multiple frames simultaneously being uh, rendered. It was, it was really cool. It was just, uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, the Chuck Moore talk I was, I think it was just a fireside chat. He was just talking about fourth in general. Um, I just wanted to get a feel for, yeah, what kind of, <laughs> what kind of space that was in. Uh, it was, there was an article the other day on the kind of the lost art of keeping things simple. Um, and so I yeah, ended up just Googling for some of these talks. It's, it's stuff to have in the background while I'm working. So I can just kind of soak up some of the some of the color of different uh, programming languages that I haven't written in. Um, so especially, uh, oh, CSE Mark, you did not miss the fun stuff. You, there, there, were, there was no fun stuff. It has just been carnage this stream. It has just been a lot of stuff not working. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't don't worry. The Mike Acton one is fun, even though he's a bit ranty. Yeah, uh, dude, that's uh, like him and um, who's the guy from the C++ uh, standardization the committee with the bowl cut? Um, that dude has some great um, has, uh, has some great rants on um, data oriented design, essentially. Um, and yeah, they're, they're one of those ones that like, do, does it really have to be this much, like, like this dickish when you're saying it? But fuck it, I, I will take the experience and just not try, not try not to act like that. Yeah, that's the Mike Acton data or design one. Um, yeah, bowl cut. Yeah, that's Scott. Scott Mayers? Is, was that? Sure. I'll believe it. Whatever. <laughs> Whoever it is. I actually, one second. I'm not going to do it on this screen. God knows what I'm gonna get if I start searching for just ball cuts and um, yeah, Scott Mayers. It was as well. CPU caches and why you care, and a couple of other ones he's done. Um, yeah, it's great. That's the dude. Yeah, that's him. Oh man. God, this is this is this is bugging the shit out of me. After this stream, I might just actually go back and do some of this. Depends on how how burnt out I feel. I'm pretty just just tired. Um, Arcadia, yeah, Arcadia, the the Unity uh, closure integration stuff. That's that's very cool. Um, again, like if I was more interested in making engines, like, oh sorry, let's get, let's rephrase that. If I wanted to make a game in Lisp right now then maybe Arcadia is the way to go. Or maybe I might try Borodust's engine. Um, but I'm not super interested in making a game like in a hurry. I, I'm more interested in having somewhere I can play with stuff easily. And there's, and obviously as you see, like there's still too much nitty gritty fucking around I'm doing. I, I want Keppel to be low level. 
like this. Like this is as low as I want kind of Keppel to be. Um, and I want to build tools on top of that. But I'm in no hurry to make... I haven't I haven't got a game project that's like so burning and like that I specifically want to do in Lisp that's so burning I need to do it now. If you, if you want to make a game, right? If you actually want to make a game, use a fucking game engine. <laughs> because, but if you want to make a game engine, make a fucking game engine. Um, yeah, Shimera is uh, not about today, but to be honest, it, it's fine. He wouldn't have wanted to watch this stream. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it would be nice to have him here. Yeah, Borodos has a higher level for bots. He has good dogs. On. Yeah, uh, Borodos is a machine. That dude is putting out so much stuff. Yeah, his high level, um, like, a bodge is cool anyway. And then he's got that, uh, what was it, game, not game kit. Was it game kit? Built on top of it. Um, but anyway, yeah, that one's, wasn't that 2D only though? Yeah, hey Shin, if you're watching it on playback, hey. Um... Trivial game kit, that was it, yeah. Um, <laughs> the heckling would have been worthwhile though. Oh, totally, he would have ripped the shit out of this one. Oh, what a bugger. I thought this was going to be so easy. It should have been so easy. But on the bright side, at least we found a bug or two in Kappel. I can't believe that clear bug. That's so stupid. So we had two things with... So fra it was fragment shaders... Um, if you're just returning a float, the rest of it can be garbage. That's good to know. And I'm not sure whether I should step like. So at the moment in Vario, if you return a something that's not a vector four as the first value from a vertex stage, it will complain at you. So like, where am I? I'm on the wrong computer. Everything's going so well. Um, let's bring up flow. Yeah, so if here I was to return instead, you know, a vector 2, it will complain and say the primary return value from this must be a vec 4. I could do that for fragment stages as well, or I could just look at it and if the value is less than, sorry, if the value is any scalar or, or smaller um, vector, I could just change it automatically. The problem with changing it automatically, of course, is that, that you're lying to the programmer about what they're doing, but also it might be, if it can only realistically be a vector for, then just do it. But then I suppose it's the W component, what's your default value there? So I might just complain and do this, but for fragment stages as well. At least that'll be consistent across the two stages. Hmm. Dunno. Dunno. <laughs> right okay so we've gone past 10 we haven't achieved anything <laughs> i think that's it thanks a lot guys thanks for putting up with this one uh let's let's uh let's plan something next time can, sorry cse mark saying can you look at the assembly produced by spcl for a bit of code yeah sure i can do that um, we just do slime disassemble. Oh, is it not that in this? Oh, fuck it. Let's just do it from the repl one. Oh, of course, because I just can't spell disassemble. That's why. Do disassemble for, let's just think of some simple function. Um, one of the destructive, uh, vector three multiply by scalar. There you go. Or multiplied by another vector. Come on. You know, this kind of stuff. This is compiled with uh, speed three safety one. So there's going to be a couple of checks in here to make sure you're not passing the wrong thing, which you're probably seeing down here jumps to invalid args and things like this. But yeah, that's how you do that. Um, Yeah, thanks, Johnny. Um, and thanks to everyone else. Oh, reminder that this guy makes cool vids. Adam Smasher. Who's that chap? 
I recognize that name. Why do I recognize that name? Oh yeah, that's the dude making the other common lisp stuff, going through practical... Uh, the, intro, the AI, the classic AI Norvig um, common list book. Right, gotta go. Let's stop this. Let's, let's, let, let's let this end. Please let it die. See you, folks. Bye.